Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian Clark aka Clarkio and you are watching the Visual Studio Code release highlights video for April 2020. Let's swipe on over into those new features. All right, so this feature is called semantic token styling. What it's about is being able to pick out keywords in your programming language, like the let here, or the variable name, or the class type, right? I'm using TypeScript in this particular file. This semantic token styling is available today in for TypeScript and JavaScript with support for Java and C++ currently under development. And what this essentially means is allows us to override the coloring that might be decided upon the theme author uh, that we are currently using. So maybe you really enjoy a theme, but there's certain aspects of that theming that you want to customize a little bit further without having to create a whole new theme just for yourself. This is a great way to go about that. So let's say I want to enable this for this particular project. I don't want to do it on a global scale. What I'm going to do is open up my settings JSON file that's specific to this project. That is typically under the .vs code folder and a settings JSON file. So I'll open up that hide the sidebar, and let's move this to where we can see them side by side. I'm going to add a new one, and I'm basically just going to straight up copy from the release notes the example that they provide there. So paste that in, and just so that we can see this a bit better, let's focus on that like that. So we set it to enable true. This is editor.semanticTokenColorCustomizations key, and the value is a JSON object with a bunch of key value pairs that we can describe the overriding rules that we want to apply here. So they give you the example here of the read only for all constants to change that color there, or symbol declarations of bold, but let's create a new one here. I want to update these classes. I don't really like the green here for app class, the Twitch chat service class, and so on. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change that. And I'm pressing control space to bring up the IntelliSense to let me know what are possible capabilities here to choose, and I'm gonna select the class one. And by default, setting that to red, and then we see that those particular class names are now shown in red. So obviously I wouldn't want to use red here, but if you need to customize something a bit more, you can hover over the hex color code right there and start sliding and picking and choosing. Go against the color scale there, that spectrum, choose a different color, and then let that save. And then you can see the ch color changes again. So this allows you to not rely on maybe having to fork the repository for the theme that you enjoy using just to make the specific changes you want for the color scheme. Uh, you can instead just override them on a per project basis or globally for all projects that you open up. Again, that support it, and that is TypeScript and JavaScript with Java and C++ soon to be available uh, in the near future. If you're anything like me as a developer, you tend to have a ton of tabs open and files open at the same time. You're going to like this feature. This one is called Switch Tabs Using Mouse Wheel. So we have a bunch of files open, and now I'm at the point where, you know, there's like a horizontal scroll wheel for the amount of files that I have open. What do I do? Well, one, let's say I'm looking for an index file. Currently, the way I would have to do that, I could certainly scroll to see all the different tabs that are open right now but I have to click into each individual file to see the contents of them to figure out if that's the correct index file I'm looking for right now. What I can do through a new setting, scroll to switch tab. So I'm gonna go control comma or command comma if you're on Mac to open up settings and I'm gonna search for scroll to switch tabs. And there it is. Check this box to turn it on. Now, let's close this out. If I scroll, it's switching to each tab that I have open, each file for me, just by scrolling on my mouse wheel. I don't have to click anymore. It's a little bit quicker, nice little performance improvement to navigate through all these files. I am really excited about this new feature as a Node.js developer within the new JavaScript debugger, which is in preview by the way, so keep that in mind. There, it is subject to change, but it's not quite fully released yet. It's in preview, you can use it today, but in particular, there is profiling support now available for the new JavaScript debugger. So let's take a look at what that entails. One, you need to enable the new JavaScript debugger in your settings. So you're gonna go into settings, control comma or command comma. You're gonna look for JavaScript debug preview, and you're gonna make sure this is checked. Use the new in preview JavaScript debugger for Node.js and Chrome and make sure that's enabled in order to have access to this. Once you have that enabled, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run and debug my application. 
So I'm going to go over to the debug view here, and I'm going to click on this launch configuration that I have set up for this project. So that's going to start running. It's going to do its thing. I'm using TypeScript here, which transpiles down to JavaScript. And in particular, we're going to focus on the call stack within the debug view. Now, uh, I had already set up a breakpoint on this main file, the index file here. And the reason I want to do that is I want to be able to profile what's, what's my startup time like. What's the full time take to do that? And the way I can do that is, one, I want to stop here at one of the first lines that starts my application in the index.ts file, which is creating this new app server. So I have a breakpoint there. We're paused there. Now I can go over to my call stack on the right-hand side, and there's this new option, take performance profile, that little circle there. I'm going to click on that, and now it prompts me to either choose how long to run the profiling of my application in the process that's running this. I can choose to run it manually, specify a duration for how long it should run, in terms of time or pick it to stop profiling at another breakpoint. I'm going to choose to do manual right now because I just want to see the full startup time and then once everything is settled and I know it's fully started then I'll stop profiling on my own. So we'll click manual here and now we'll notice in the debug toolbar which allows you to pause over step into step out of and all that fun stuff has a new icon here this red circle that says stop performance profile. So I'm going to double check my debug console to make sure it's finished running. Yep, so that's the usual logs that I have for my application when it's fully started up. I'm going to click Stop Profile. Now it generates a CPU profile file in particular, and that is within the Explorer view. And if you go back and open it up, it renders this nice UI to give you a breakdown of how long your startup time is or how long that profile ran and what is the timing for each particular aspect or part and function of your application that from start to finish, when you started profiling to when you stopped profiling, how long each individual piece of that took to run. Now this is fantastic. This is really exciting because you used to have to install separate things, uh, CLI tools and whatnot to kind of gather this information with Node back in the day. And it's really nice to get a visual representation here of that. But we're gonna do you one better. If you look closely, there's this little fire icon. And that's going to allow us to generate a, what's called a flame graph. This is going to show you a more visual representation of the timings of each individual component and aspect of your application uh, based on this profile that was taken. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to prompt me. It's going to notice that I don't have this extra extension that allows me to do the generating a flame graph, what it's called. So I'm going to click install on that. And it looks like that worked just fine. So if I go back over to my profile and I click on this, there we go. So now I can see the flame graph. I'm using my scroll wheel to scroll in and out. Uh, I'm going to go into like the anonymous area. And this gives you what's called a flame. This is a flame graph, basically. So it lets you get a more visual representation of the timings of each individual aspect of your application and how long your code is taking to run within each of those sections of the code. So like I have my effects manager, that's specific to my project, uh, app server dot start overlay, I can see the timing of that, uh, configuration, this whole app server, this is within the app server class, and so forth. And if I need to scroll over a bit, I can see the effects manager timing. This is really great. It's going to help me figure out what are the bottlenecks in my application so that I can look to try and improve the performance of my application in this fashion. Really looking forward to this getting into full release and excited about this new feature in the new JavaScript debugger. So something quick I want to highlight here as part of the ongoing effort from the VS Code team is it's a top priority to make sure that Visual Studio Code is a more accessible product and improving the experiences for every user. And so what they've done now is they've created a Gitter channel for VS Code accessibility and that way it allows people in the community to join in, give feedback, bring up problems, and share those accessibility practices that they can apply to this tool, to Visual Studio Code. So something specifically pertaining to accessibility in this release is new commands for focusing the next part and focusing the previous part, allowing you to navigate across the workbench. Status bar is now accessible when focused, and screen readers can read its content and then uh, introducing ARIA labels, which is very important so that you can navigate more understandably through the components within the tool itself. Thank you all so much for watching this month's highlight video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some value out of it. If you did and you feel so inclined, please be sure to share it. 
Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Happy coding, everyone.